There's actually three reasons why this is the best scene in Jujutsu Kaisen. It is still the most quoted panel to this day. I mean, when you have guys like Broken Ronin naming their podcast after it, you know it's iconic. And it all boils down to how this scene redefines the story. Granted, there were similar moments prior to this scene, and the themes represented here were already lingering. But this scene essentially sets the tone for the entire rest of the story. To the point where we are still seeing its influence today, especially in the fight between Tsukuna and Gojo. Now, admittedly, the first reason this scene is so popular isn't that deep. That reason being that it's just a really hype moment. I mean, you have Gojo. Oh, wait a minute. Anyone who isn't caught up yet? Spoilers. Should have been pretty obvious, but this is the internet. Anyway, you have Gojo basically coming back from the dead to fight Toji. Not to save Amanai. Literally just for a rematch. Kind of like when you hunt down that guy who sniped you across the map. So you get this raw grudge match between two of the most hyped characters in the series. Both of which say F it to all of their principles and fight simply because they want to win. Which builds up to Gojo reaching this power high where he's so on cloud 9 that he drops that legendary quote, declares himself the honored one, basically calling himself a god after which he puts his money where his mouth is and destroys Toji. It's a battle of JJK titans and it's just raw, plain and simple. For that reason, people still view this fight as one of the best fights in Jujutsu Kaisen. And when they quote the scene, they're referring to one of the single biggest flexes in all of literature, not just anime and manga. This is even more true after the recent anime adaptation. There were a lot of Twitter bots saying, oh, they changed it, they ruined it. But there are also some people who genuinely like the manga version better. Personally, I kind of like the anime version better, and I'm sure plenty of other people were just as excited when they saw the scene finally animated. But another reason people might refer to this scene is because it's a defining moment in Gojo's character character arc. This is also a defining moment in the broader story of JJK, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Actually, before I get into how this changes Gojo, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. But like I was saying, there is a reason JJK randomly decides to do a flashback arc. Because prior to this point, there wasn't that much characterization for Gojo. He had plenty of personality and he had his quirks, but it's kind of hard to show the human side of a character when he's never really been challenged. He had a few moments where he got pretty mad, but that was about it. And when you're the adult, and I use that term generously since it is Gojo we're talking about, when you're the adult in a story about kids, it's kind of hard to show a coming of age arc without a flashback. And that's exactly what Gojo's past is. It is a coming of age story for Gojo. A story where he starts out as a cocky person who's also just a happy-go-lucky kid. Throughout his mission, he always tries to do the right thing. Even going so far as telling Geto that they can run away with Amanai if she doesn't want to be the next vessel. And then, Toji unalives her in cold blood and spits on all of that. This is a huge moment for the characters and readers. Because when this happens, we see Geto finally snap. And we as readers snap too because we go from everything being good and the characters living out their dreams to just boom, done. It's a huge turning point in the series because for the most part, JJK is a generally light series up until this point. But this scene marks the turning point in which things get much darker and now characters can die in an instant. And this mirrors Gojo's character arc because he was the happy-go-lucky kid who wanted to do the right thing. But after he recovers from the first fight, he forgets all of that and challenges Toji for revenge. He even admits in the fight that he isn't doing it to avenge Amanai. In that moment, he is purely doing it because it feels good. It's a sharp turn from fighting to do the right thing to fighting to win and fighting for the sake of fighting. It is a defining moment for Gojo because it explains how he could be so cocky in his previous fights against characters like Jogo, and it explains his current state of mind in the fight against Tsukuna. After the scene, we realize that while he does want to do the right thing, Gojo always fights because he knows he can win and because he knows he is the honored one. In short, he knows knows he's that guy. And like I said before, this is also a turning point for the series as a whole. Because which arc comes right after this? Shibuya. One of the most iconic arcs in the series where characters are constantly in melees, and any one of them could die at any second. And on that note, this brings us to the third reason the Honored One panel is so iconic. Because yes, it is hype, and yes, it is a defining moment for Gojo, but it also serves as a defining moment for all of JJK in the sense that this character arc is reflected in a number of other characters. Obviously, Gojo is the pinnacle of Jujutsu society. As such, he's an influential member of that society. 
and when you compare his arc to the other characters, you can make a lot of parallels. The two that stand out the most are Yuji and Megami. Megami's happens early on, so we'll start here. In fact, his is probably the best example of what it means to be a sorcerer after Gojo. In a flashback, we see Gojo explain that Megami doesn't give it his all, pointing to how Megami would rather sacrifice a run to get a teammate on base, implying that he'd rather do that than swing for a home run. He then explains that unlike baseball, being a sorcerer is not a team sport. Here we can see a huge parallel to Gojo's revelation against Toji. In the fight against Toji, Gojo gives up on fighting for others and begins to fight for the sake of winning. What he tells Megami is that he has to fight for himself. And we see this when Megami gets knocked out and we hear Gojo's voice telling him to be greedier. This is how we can see Gojo literally influencing Megami. Gojo says in black and white that being a sorcerer is about fighting for yourself. And we see Megami change from someone who, like Gojo, fights because it's the right thing, to someone who just wants to win. And like Gojo, this moment can be seen when Megami has this strangely insane moment of clarity. A feeling we also get with Yuji, but with somewhat of a twist. With Megami, the focus is one fighting for yourself. With Yuji, it's more about why he fights cursed spirits. Still on topic, but more of an extension of what we see with Gojo. This of course happens in the final fight against Mahito. Mahito transforms and seems to be winning, but then Yuji finally gets the upper hand. And after watching a bunch of his friends die all because of Mahito, he finally figures it out. He tells Mahito that the two of them are no different, that they're just two sides, the hunter and the prey. This is a stark contrast from when Yuji starts out and he becomes a sorcerer to help people. After watching everyone die and seeing that no matter how many people he tries to save, it never seems to make a difference, Yuji realizes that the only thing that matters is that he defeats cursed spirits. In other words, the only thing that matters is that he wins. And here we see the connection to Gojo. Like Gojo, Yuji realizes that while fighting them does protect people to some extent, the only reason he fights cursed spirits is because that's what he's supposed to do. Jujutsu sorcerers aren't heroes, they're hunters. Now, I'm sure there's other examples of this kind of character arc, but these are the two big ones. And you probably wouldn't have had them if it weren't for a character like Gojo. So when you see the Honored One scene of Gojo, this is why it's so iconic. Not only is it one of the most hype scenes to this day, but it stands as a defining moment for some of the best characters and the story as a whole. It's for these reasons that this panel is the most legendary panel in all of JJK. But now I'd like to hear what you think. Why do you think this scene is so popular? How do you think it changed JJK? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another discussion like this one, then make sure to check out my recent video on Yuji. In that video, I explain why Yuji is a great main character, even though he's kind of on the sidelines. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.